Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm going to be doing an unboxing of ASUS GeForce GTX 660 Ti DirectCU 2 version Overclocked Edition. Now before I start there will be three parts of the video. Part number one, you can click here which will be just overall look on the box and see basically what are the stickers saying and advertisements and stuff like that. Um, part number two is going to be the unboxing so we'll see all the contents inside and how the graphics card look like and part number three as you see there is going to be a conclusion and my closing comments and I'm going to explain to you why did I uh, choose this graphics card as opposed to AMD version or as opposed to maybe other GTX um, GPUs so yeah guys um, if you want to forward it just click on the links Otherwise, we're going to start from the part one, and that's the look at the box. So here we go, um, ASUS version, obviously, uh, DirectCU 2 Overclocked Edition, which is cooler and quieter, which is correct. Now, I don't know, there might be quieter and cooler versions of the GTX 660 Ti, but that's one of a um, few that's performing really well. It's well cooled and it's really quiet. I've tried the direct CU cooler before, not the second edition. So with single fan, it was really much, much, much more quieter than the basic standard NVIDIA edition graphics card. I'm not sure about the AT, uh, sorry, AMD versions. So it's overclocked edition, two gigabytes of GDL5, which is plenty for my games, which is 1080p and for rendering of the Adobe application. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and the Photoshop Digi Plus, so they use digital components um, so you can use software provided basically for overclocking GPU tweak, real-time uh, tweaking, same thing um, DirectX 11, SLI, Physics, 3D Vision If I'm not mistaken, these bad boys support 3-way SLI um, Here, just the same thing on the back okay so here we go um, inputs outputs you have DVI you have VGA compatible however it's actually two DVI so you just can get adapter and use one as for VGA do not guys do not use VGA if you can use DVI or HDMI or display port so display port HDMI two DVI's could be used as VGA okay so then again, DigiVRM, super alloy power, 30% reduction in noise and longer lifespan, which is correct. What else? GPU tweak application, really handy application to do all the tweaks. Although I don't think I'll be overclocking just yet because that would be plenty for my needs. And yep, what else? GPU boost, you can read about that more on the internet. Sorry guys for interruption there. Back to what I was saying. So recommended system requirements, two gigabytes or more system memory. I would recommend guys four or eight gigabytes, or at least six, something like that. Uh, motherboard with free PCI Express slots and PCI chipset driver. Duh. Um, now any PCI Express as in 2.0 or 3.0 will do. This graphics card supports and is made for 3.0. However, you can use it for 2.0. So if you have a, if you currently own a motherboard that only has PCI Express 2.0 16x lane, don't be alarmed. It will be working just fine and actually might not notice any difference if you jump from 2.0 to 3.0 only. So it's not a bottleneck or anything like that. So just keep playing. Um, Windows 7, Vista, XP, hmm, XP, interesting. Minimum 550 watt system power supply. Bit an overstatement, if you have a quality power supply from whatever manufacturer you choose, now I, I, I won't start naming them, but there's loads. You should have plenty, even with 450, 500 watt, easily. 550 is basically you'll have loads of extra um, watches there to feed your system. Now what else? Two 
six pin um, express connectors provided I think in that box already um, but make sure your power supply provides proper two six pin connectors so you wouldn't have to do by adapters which is really a bad idea guys especially if you overclock so this is the box itself next we're gonna do a quick look inside shall we so this particular edition as you've seen on the box is Bord Borderlands edition so I expect to find something about the game inside now that depends on the region and to be honest guys I wouldn't mind too much if it wasn't there because I'm not gonna play it simply because I have other games that I haven't played yet and I'm dying to get my hands on so Asus box as usual very nice and inside once again the same packaging as I think it goes to GTX 460 maybe even all the graphics sorry graphics cards so here is just your sort of foam okay there's the graphics card so not to spoil anything we're just gonna go slowly one by one so there we have it that's the borderlands and you can scratch this to re reveal the code which I'm not giving away sorry guys it's gonna go to somebody else okay um, this is the thing that I was talking about and I was saying not to use so worst case scenario guys um, DVI to VGA that I was mentioning about before do not use unless you're dying or have a monitor that only supports VGA for just a couple weeks or something please upgrade to proper digital monitor with DVI or HDMI so this is a speed setup guide I'm sure you're not gonna need that driver and setup tweak by the way coming back to this I'm gonna be doing an installation into my current PC so you guys can see how it all works that's it nothing else there slightly disappointing guys if you ask me because it's uh, in Europe anyway it's a 300 euro card it's quite expensive well to my budget anyway so I was expecting at least maybe some stickers or something like that you know at least a poster maybe but anyway so ooh, I can see that already let's reveal the graphics card itself okay nothing else inside oh, sorry. okay guys you ready this is the graphics card I'm gonna try to grab myself here I don't want to ruin it before I even start using it okay so there it is guys um Honestly, there's nothing amazing about the graphics card itself. It's well built. It's looking great But it's only a graphics card, you know, there's no No LEDs or special effects or anything like that, but it's It's pretty niche. It's solid build um, You can see that it's a quality product from Asus. That's your SLI bridges Huge heat pipes there two coolers for the direct cu2 hence the two i'm gonna actually remove that sticker if i can i did that because if it heats up that sticker is going to be permanently on it or going to melt worst case scenario so there you go that's the underneath of the card so lots of cooling now talking about the PCB itself it's short enough PCB guys the length of it you know what I'm actually gonna get the measuring tape and I'm gonna show you that so this is your GPU and this is my measuring tape so the length of the actual PCB is only 23 centimeters or 9 inches and overall length is 27 centimeters or 10 and a half inches for those in states, UK or Ireland. 
or any other country that measures everything in inches. Okay, um, yep, now let's see where is the... Oh, there we are. So that's your connector for two six pin um, basically power cables to power the graphics cards. Here, that's a bit strange that it's the these guys are moving just there, but I think this is basically so the card will look bigger that way. I think so, anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe there's some other reasons. So that's your just a ventilation, some sort of slots, two DVI, or could be as a VGA, as you see there, your HDMI and display ports. Okay, so there you have it, guys. That's your, or in this case, my GTX 560 Ti from Asus. So that pretty much concludes the video itself of the unboxing, guys. There's no magic in the box or anything like that, as expected. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about this product, why did I choose it, and what am I thinking about, what are my impressions about the unboxing itself, so I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay guys, and we're back, so this is just gonna be some rattling of mine of what do I think about this graphics card, why did I choose it, and things like that, so guys, it will be pretty boring for some of you who are not really interested into that, so here you could switch off the video and just leave some comments, like the video if you did like the unboxing, um, Subscribe obviously and thanks for watching for the rest of you. Here's what I think about it. So first things first As always Asus provides really nice products solid build. I haven't obviously tested it yet So I can't talk about performance much, but what I've seen From number of benchmarks and reviews and things like that on the internet of this graphics card it's an absolute beast it performs well and It's really solid products so thumbs up for that Asus and um, well done as always good quality and performance product now regarding box contents except for the you know little borderlands thingy there there's nothing amazing in the box there's a graphics card few cables setup guide borderlands game which you might not even get depending on where you are and that's it you know so could be a little bit disappointing especially given that this is only a mid-range card and the price is as high as most of the kind of high-range cards in the previous generations so some of you could be a bit reluctant whether you should upgrade or not now for the, those of you who have gtx 660 ti gtx 570 or gtx 580 unless you you're dying to upgrade and you want to get the best eye candy I would say hold off a bit because these graphics cards will be a little bit cheaper in the future obviously and because it's not such a huge jump now this graphics card performs overall um, somewhere in between I'd say GTX 580 GTX 570 mostly on the par with GTX 580, sometimes even beating it, depends on what games you're using. However, if you to throw something like an Adobe Applications at it, GTX 570 is going to be faster. Okay, first uh, because obviously it's a certified by Adobe, secondly because the older architecture actually deals better with the GPU computing, so that means that all the six series graphics cards are more targeted to, towards games, towards the gamers, not the, for their computing. Okay, now that's where AMD cards, cards come in if you're going towards computing. As far as I'm aware, AMD cards would be a bit faster. Now also if you have 7950 overclocked edition, it could be going as fast as this or even faster in some scenarios. So if you're an AMD fan, there's no really reason to go for GTX 660 Ti unless you're using Adobe. What else is there to say? I had obvious choices there, GTX 570 or this GPU or 7950 AMD. Now, 
I went for this versus 570 only for one reason and one reason only. It's because it's less hungry on power, way less hungry on power, guys. So it's a no-brainer to me. Obviously, you can resell it easier than GTX 570 after maybe a year or a year and a half when you're willing to upgrade. So it's more future-proof than GTX 570. However, if you're purely into GPU computing, you don't care about the you know, newest technologies and you can get it for something like 100 euro, 100 dollar cheaper, go for GTX 570, it's as good as graphics card. Um, what else is there, guys? So, yeah, I, I, was, I was really doubting about whether to get this or to spend you know, 50, 60, 70 euro less and get a GTX 570, but I think the, because it's cooler, it's quieter, because obviously it doesn't need to be cooled as much, and it's less power hungry, I just went for this. Plus, I'm sure you guys are interested what this guy, this graphics card, should I say, um, can do when it's actually in the computer case and when we're gonna benchmark it. So I'm gonna do some benchmark and separate video for that. So that's the length of conclusion, guys. If you are an AMD fan, it's 7,950 all the way. If you are an NVIDIA fan, it's a good choice. However, if you're upgrading from a kind of mid to high end, like 560 Ti, 570, 580 G4 series, maybe think about it a little bit and you know, see if you really need to upgrade just now. If you want to compare this versus GTX 570, GTX 5, sorry, GTX 670, GTX 670 is much faster graphics card in some cases. However, it's not that fast um, where you would need to spend that much more money unless you into 3D vision, multiple displays, huge resolutions and things like that. Yeah, so that's it guys. For the moment, that's all my impressions about the graphics card. I like the way it looks. I think I like the way it performs. We're gonna do some benchmarks and we're gonna see it for ourselves. And I like what's included in the box. So, so far so good. I hope you liked the video. Sorry to bore you there with all the information. I hope you found that somewhere helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. But guys, please re respect each other. No fanboys, no shouting AMD is better or, you know, GTX 670 so much better, things like that. Base your opinion on real facts. I've done a number of researches and I know what I'm talking about. And I've seen what other people produce in terms of benchmark scores. So at the moment, at least, up-to-date information gives me all this knowledge and I can share it with you. So yeah, thanks for watching and click the like button if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest videos and have a nice day.